So you want to know how your DHCP clients can receive IP addresses from a remote DHCP server. In this video, I show you how. All right, so to get started, I'll give you an overview of the topology. On the right hand side, I have PCB, which is in the blue VLAN. And this is going to be simulating the DHCP client that is requesting an IP address from this remote DHCP server located on a completely different network. Now, just to give you some insights behind the scenes, this is a VMX device that is configured as a DHCP server to offer up IP addresses for the red as well as the blue VLAN. It's offering, these inter it's offering up these addresses on the IRB.10 interface with the IP address of 10.0.1.1. If we look over at the blue VLAN, we can see that the gateway for PCB is going to be, uh, if I just move myself out of the way for a moment, we can see its gateway is going to be 10.0.2.1 uh, on the IRB.20 interface. So as you can see, completely different network. So if I go ahead and jump on PCB and I issue uh, IP DHCP to attempt to request an IP address via DHCP, we can see that it's attempting to send out the discover message, but inevitably it's going to fail because there's no DHCP server on its local subnet. As you can see, can't find the DHCP server. So what we'll be doing is jumping on VMXB and configuring that relay agent for this IRB interface.20 that's going to receive that discover message and allow it to forward it to the IP address of 10.0.1.1 so that that DHCP discover message can make it to the DHCP server and our DHCP client PCB can receive an IP address. <laughs> Lastly, what's essential to making this all work is end-to-end -end IP connectivity. So what do I mean by that? MXB needs to have a valid route in order to reach the network of 10.0.1.1. Currently in this example, I have OSPF set up to where those IRB interfaces are being shared. So when I hop on MXB and I look at the show route, I can see that I'm learning about this 10.0.1 network via OSBF. So I'll show you a quick snapshot of the configurations in place. If I look at MXA, you can see the DHP server configuration that's in place and the pools that it's offering IP addresses for. You can see that it's serving up those pools on that IRB.10 interface. If any of this configuration looks a bit hairy, check out the earlier video that I posted on this channel where I demonstrate how to configure a DHCP server on your Juniper device. Now that we've taken a look at MXA, I'll take a look at MXB. Here we can see we just have that WAN link IP address configured, OSPF is enabled, and the interface connecting down to PCB. All right, so. In order to bring this to life, I'll enter into the edit tier of the configuration and I want to edit my forwarding options. I'll move into DHCP relay as well and I'll hit enter. So under forwarding options DHCP relay, I want to configure the server group. So I'll issue the command set server group. I'll give it a name. In this case, I'll just call it DHCP relay. And if I do a question mark, it's looking for the IP address of the DHP server. So I'll go ahead and put in the IP address of 10.0.1.1 and I'll hit enter. I'll make sure that this is the active server group by issuing the command set active server group and I'll specify DHP relay, the group that I just created. Now I want to specify what interface this relay agent is going to be listening for discover messages so that it can forward to this DHP server. And in this case, in order to list that, that interface, I'll issue the command set group. I'll give, this I'll give this group a name, I'll call it all, and I'll specify the interface as IRB.20. And I'll hit enter. So if I give this a show, I can see that I have the server group configured pointing to the DHP server, as well as the interface that's going to be listening for those discover messages to be forwarded over to the DHP server and everything looks good. So I'll go ahead and issue a commit and quit. And boom. All right, so now once I bring up PCB, 
I'll reattempt to discover an IP address via DHCP using the command IP DHCP. And here we can see it transitions through the door process because it was able to make its way over to the DHCP server. And here I have the IP address of 10.0.2.16. And if I was to attempt to ping the DHCP server that's on that 10.0.1.1 address, you see I have round trip connectivity. <laughs> All right, well, that is the end of this video. I hope you found this video informative. If you did, go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to the channel and tick that bell notification icon so you can stay tuned for future videos. As always, thanks for viewing and I'll see you in the next one. Also, if you happen to find that DHP server configuration earlier a bit hairy, try looking at this video where I demonstrate how to configure your device as a DHP server on Junos.